So mold is the word that the tenants freak out over. You as a landlord should freak over out over the word he just said, lawsuits, right? So if the source of mold is water damage, water damage, then are there simple things that we could do to try to prevent those sort of just having... A lot of times the problems are hidden, right? I, I never want to say it, it's not always purposeful that, that, that you allow water damage to, to continue. We don't always know that there's a, a, a slow roof leak right? and it's coming down the walls and, and, and it's hidden. You just don't know. So, so, so not every situation is blatant or, or, or purposeful. It, it's, it's, it's accidental. It, it, it's damage that's unbeknownst to anybody. And as we all know, tenants don't necessarily, tenants see stuff and they don't tell anybody. They, they don't want to deal with damaged walls. They don't want anyone coming in and, and, and upsetting their regular routine, right? So it, it's up to tenants, excuse me, it's up to landlords to really just go in and check your properties. Make sure you don't have problems that, that, that are growing right, right under your tenant's eyes that they're not telling anybody. We see that all the time, whether it's apartments or single family homes. Tenants don't want to be bothered, and they'll let stuff, water damage continue, they, they, they won't tell anybody, until it becomes a quote-unquote, they smell mold, and again, their heads start to spin. And at that point, they want everybody coming in and doing everything in their power to fix it immediately. And they start threatening everybody and anybody. Okay, so then along those lines then, if you are saying the water is the source, and oftentimes they just blow the spores around, if you, and, and that chlor, Clorox is actually something that mold can feed on, that I was a new thing. Did I, did you know that? I didn't know that. So, um, but if I'm going to buy a building, what are some of the red flags? What do I want to be looking for? And I know you say some of it's hidden, but I would imagine that there's things. There's always, st right? It, it, they're staining. You, you'll, you'll always can tell when, when there are leaks Roof leaks are going to stain someplace, whether it's an attic, whether it's down walls, you have windows that are unsealed, you're going to get moisture and condensation and you're going to see staining on walls, right? It, 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 that is usually a sign of, of greater damage. I, I'm not saying anything so profound here. Um, I, I see situations where people don't even get properties inspected. It, it, it boggles my mind. Um, we, we get called into situations... Um, Multi, not large multifamily, but but eight, ten unit buildings, single family, uh, tenant situations, where people people bought properties and they never had it properly inspected. They may be looking for structural issues, but they're bypassing issues that are gonna, water damage related issues, which are going to turn into mold. I mean, I'm not here to talk about structural issues, but you know, mold grows and and mold is going to create structural issues if you start getting rotting wood and, and, and rotting joists, which happened which happened in crawl spaces all the time, right? That's the gift from our for our business, that's the gift that keeps on giving. It is. Mold and crawl spaces. It's 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 wonderful. Forgive me, but <laughs> we are capitalists here. <laughs> cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. <laughs> that's the business. Um, it, it's usually because no, I shouldn't say that. But a lot of situations can be easily prevented just being diligent in your inspection. Of, of any property. So what are some of the, you said, you know, deal with it and, and don't hide it. So what are some of the classic hiding techniques? Uh, obviously Clorox. Bleach. Bleach. But Bleach is else? number one. Okay. Painting over it. Mm -hmm. we, I, I, we, 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 people paint over mold all the time. I mean, you, I mean it, 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 it's like faux painting on a wall, right? You, 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 bad mold. It's not hard to spot. I've seen people just paint right over it. Hi, you, you, you could hide it, no one will notice it. You bleach it, paint it, right, and it's gonna disappear. It's not gonna disappear, it's gonna come through. And the smell is gonna get terrible and the ten, tenants walk around smelling. They look for it. So it, hide it, everyone tries to hide, I shouldn't say everyone. The problems occur when, someone, when somebody, some entity, person, place, thing, tries to hide the mold or high damage. So so the most common places are, of course, where pipes and condensation. Pipes, roof leaks around windows, um, around appliances. There are dr 
undiscovered like washers and dryers uh, kind of thing dishwashers washer dryers <coughs> refrigerator water lines clog up i mean i'm certainly not the appliance expert but i see yes the gentleman in the back uh, i was just going to ask a question finish your thought no I could go on for okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> Once the thought disappears. No, I, sorry, I, I don't mean to make light. But appliances around in the kitchen, washer dryers, any place water runs, you you, you get a tiny leak, a little <coughs> pinprick in a in, in, in a in a line. Over time, that's going to create a large problem. Mm -hmm. You don't see it half the time until it creates a big problem, right? We'll we'll, we'll go in and do a water damage spill uh, because someone's dishwasher uh, overflowed and, and you pull it out and you realize there's been a leak in the line and you have rotted walls and you have rotted cabinets and, and, and it turns into a major both water damage mitigation and, and mold remediation but no one knew no one was aware of it did you have a question sure yeah so if, um so thank you for debunking the myth that, that bleach doesn't solve the problem. So uh, chemically speaking, um, what, what does remediate mold? Like what's the process look like? We, we use registered antimicrobials that you, you spray on. You, you, some you leave, some you wipe off. But, but, but there are uh, EPA approved products from, from mold remediation, right? And depending on the extent of the damage is the extent of, of, of the remediation that that goes into. It, 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 it's scrubbing, it, 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 it's removing materials and replacing those materials. It all depends the extent of, of the mold. So, okay, uh, did you have a question? I did. So, like pipes are going to bust, things are going to overflow. What do you do as a landlord if, if your tenant calls you immediately and says, this happened? How do you not let that turn into a mold situation? What do you... You, you, you make sure the professionals get out there immediately. Because if, if, if moist materials are just left to dry improperly, mold will occur, without okay. a doubt. So ring, 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 ring. Hey, Mr. Pick, I, my tenant let on the first floor or the second floor let their child um, play in the bathtub and the water has overflowed and it's now leaking down into my um, Not atypical. We do second, get second. Um, my first floor um, people. What do I do and help? So then, w talk talk me through the process. What would happen? Look, from our business, uh, one of our responsibilities is promptness. Right? We we do work for insurance carriers. We we do work for large property management companies, and we promise them we're going to be on site within a certain amount of time. So the faster we get on site, the faster any mitigation company gets on site. You you can minimize the damage right you, you it, it it you the key to minimizing damage is, is getting there quick and, and and analyzing and containing the problem right and by containing the problem you, you have minimized the damage and that's really the key right minimizing the damage is minimizing the cost that's what our insurance carriers want from us right they, they want us to keep the cost down our, our, our tenant customers, our property management customers, want us to keep the cost of mitigation and remediation down. Right? Everyone's concerned about the bottom line. You will do that by rapidly responding and, and, and taking care of a problem before it grows. So typically that's a really big ouch for the landlord because that's not money that they have necessarily set aside. Um, uh, most, most we teach, teach people to have a reserve for the, contingencies and things like that but sometimes that can't happen you know that just that happens and you just don't so talk about that interplay with insurance and what you see all the different carriers and I'm not saying to name insurance companies by name but are there claims that they would typically cover and then claims that they won't and typical day-to-day -day water damage issues are going to be covered by insurance busted pipes leaky water lines, uh, appliance-related issues, leaky roofs, uh, yes? Can I do it? I'll, I'll, I'll ask after. Oh, okay. Um, what they're not going to cover is if, you've, if they feel that you've known there's a problem and you haven't taken care of it, if it's, if it's been there and they sense you've known about it, right? You've had water, you've had a leaky roof for six months and you just haven't told anybody and all of a sudden you have a mold issue, they're not going to cover that mold. They will if it's directly related to, to, to a current water damage issue. But typically, 
having, but like I just said, if you've dealt with that properly and you've dealt with that rapidly, that's not going to turn into a mold issue. It will if there was a pipe, a, a water line that no one knew was leaking, right? There's no way a homeowner, a tenant, is going to realize it. And if you have rotted wood uh, because of that, if you have growth because of that, depending on the carrier, that's more likely than not going to get covered. And some are better than others. I don't want to sit here and say which carriers are better than others. I'd like to get into motor remediation at some point. You know, I do crawl spaces, but um, when I worked for other companies, they always swore by board care. What do you think about board care? I don't use board care. Do you recommend it or no? Um, I don't use it, so I, I don't want to say it, it, it's good or bad. It wouldn't be appropriate for me. <coughs> I, I use Benefect. Uh, Decon 30, the majority of the, it's an old natural <laughs> material. It, it, it's, it, 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 it's time oil is, 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 is the base. Um, it, it, it does the job. It, it, it's not toxic. It's not dangerous. Okay. So if um, I am choosing a mold remediation company, what are the best practices for me? What should I look for? <coughs> I mean, Quite obviously frank. I want them to pick you, but if not you, then... You know, because like, there's people from all over the I said it earlier, when state. you're in the service business, it's just doing the right thing. So whether you're looking for a roofer, uh, a, a restoration company, an electrician, you want someone that, to the extent you can look online and you see reviews, I could tell you, give, as an aside, asking people to give reviews these days has gotten so difficult because there's not a business... You, it doesn't matter what I do. Uh, you know, I'll get 40 emails and follow-ups from the client, for, from whoever service I used, asking me for a review. We, we've all grown numb to it as, as my customers. It, sorry, that's an, it's just harder and harder to find out who the good companies are. But you want professional. And, and that's, to the extent you can determine that online, you, you, you talk to people. Those of you in the business know other people in the business. Talk to them. Ask them who they use. Right, it's someone who's. If you do good work, word gets around, and if you do bad work, word gets around even faster. You, sometimes you learn who not to use more than you know who to use. But it's it's. It, I, I know that's a. I don't mean to be that general in the answer. Sure. But no. it's it's the service business. We try to do the right thing, and, and it's really that simple. So I've had my my whatever. Let's um, say it's not my tub. It's a. A, a leak in my roof that I didn't know I had. Now I have the water streaming down in the middle of the rain, right? And I'm, I call you. Do I call my insurance company first or do I call you first or do I... And, and how do I ensure that you're successful and how do I ensure that I'm successful in working with the insurance company to help you be successful with them? Most, I'll say... Single family homeowners tend to call their carrier or their agent first if they have a problem. They, they, they want their insurance company to tell them who to call or, or in many cases now, a lot, a lot of the major carriers have programs where, where they will call a remediation, a restoration company, in, which is how a lot of our business comes to us. So in many cases, the homeowner calls the, rest, the insurance company and then the insurance company dispatches. This way they feel, the homeowner feels the insurance company is going to handle it for them. Okay. They, they, they've separated themselves. Interesting. From the process. They, they feel it'll be done. In many cases it will. If, so if you do the remediation and your insurance, you're not on that insurance provider's um, list of providers, does that mean that they won't pay? Nope, not at all. It, it just means they won't dispatch us out. But we get calls from homeowners all the time, and and they'll ask us if something, if they could file a claim, and we'll help them file that claim. We, we, we try to guide them properly through the process. I, I'd rather bill directly to an insurance company on someone's behalf if I can. It, it, it's, it's just a great service to provide someone if they have little insurance side i like to advise my clients to talk to someone like you before they have a conversation with the adjuster yeah always because, before yes yeah because the adjuster can navigate you out of a covered claim sometimes and i'm not saying they're awful i work for the industry but they're not awful for, first of all more and more of the insurance carriers are basically asking us to be their eyes in the field yeah. there are fewer and fewer of field adjusters and if, if you, they want you to hire a licensed professional and the ideal remediation, you're probably using the uh, adjusting platform that, that, that they use. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, talk, yes. When you guys can talk their language, it, it it's really, you know, fits together nicely. That's so a everything we do, just a little insight to the business, we, we have to take 
it's, it's starting to go to video now. It, it, historically, it's just been tons of photos. Now there are 3D cameras where, where you can do full scopes of, of every room that you're in. The insurance companies want us to do that because they don't want to send field people out. They're primarily desk adjusters now, except, that, except in the case of large loss. Large, large loss, they have adjusters in the field, right? So if we're talking multifamily, in many of those cases, if it's a significant loss, you're going to have an adjuster on site. And when it's uh, a significant loss like that, then we are beholden to the adjuster because they control the job. But a typical single family or, or, or a smaller multifamily dwelling, they're not going to send field adjusters out there. They're going to depend on us. And then we're going to do our work and they're going to approve our estimate. And then after that, they're going to try to give us the bigger haircut as possible. <laughs> but then they do the. But then they look Sorry. for the um, the old stain, and then they say, "I'm not going to cover any of it." Yeah, they're, they're not. They're really not that hard. They 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 really most want to take care of of, of their homeowners. They, they 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 don't want that reputation of really trying to squeeze somebody. They. I don't want to use the word trust. They, they rely on us to make the call, right? And, and we'll talk to adjusters. My, my, my techs in the field and my supervisors understand how to talk to adjusters, and, and they'll tell them what they see. And they're pretty honest, you know? Yeah, this is long-term damage, you know? Um, okay, thank you. You know, and, and so, so, so they learn to trust us a little bit, that, that, that what we see and, and what we're telling them. And, and that's part of it. I want to say it's part of the game. It, it's part of gaining credibility with the carriers because we depend on them for business right so we try to do the right thing by them we answer to multiple constituencies bosses you yeah. know you, you want to take care of the homeowner you want to take care of the insurance carrier or, or in the case of a, a property management or rental situation you, you obviously want to do right by the tenant you want to take care of them you're in their home but you all but you answer ultimately to the property manager or, or, or the owner of the property that dispatched you so you have to walk that line are there something...